Hi, David here, founder and CEO of the Freedom Founders Mastermind Community. I recently picked up an article that was written by the Kiplinger Tax Guide. Kiplinger has been in the marketplace for many, many years, decades and decades, and has always, in, in my opinion, been on the forefront of tax strategies for business owners and high net worth people, even consumers who are trying to make it through uh, the tough times we have today. An article they recently wrote, uh, which was entitled, uh, retirement plans don't be tricked into voluntarily paying higher taxes. Retirement plans, what, wait a minute, I thought retirement plans were supposed to save us on taxes. Well, you see, that's the this misconstruction here. You get a deduction by putting money into a retirement plan. Well, what's that? Well, that's a traditional IRA, it could be a Roth IRA, it could be a office 401k plan, cash balance plans, defined contribution plans. They're all tax deferred vehicles. The key word is tax deferred. Now there's nothing wrong with deferring taxes if you're utilizing the opportunity to compound the gains inside that vehicle, that's that's the benefit and everybody gets sold on that. And there's nothing potentially wrong with that. The problem though, is that we are delaying the payment of taxes to a date in time in which I believe personally, the taxes will be much higher. I don't see taxes going down for anybody uh, in the near term or the long term because of the amount of debt that this country carries. So you have to think hard about that. Now there's other issues with it. You can read the article in Kiplinger. Uh, I'll put a link to it in this blog. But I also wrote my own article to tag on to what I thought was the great beginning to the Kiplinger article. And I'll put this also in, in the blog. I, 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 I'm, a fan, I'm not a fan of tax deferral plans for those who wish to orchestrate their own financial future. And here's some reasons why, which actually Kiplinger did not bring out, but I'll bring out and make my point here. Number one, you put your money in a retirement vehicle, it's locked up until you're age 59 and a half. You cannot take any distributions or any of that capital back out again to do anything you want to with it without paying a penalty before the age of 59 and a half. I call it the 401k or retirement plan lockbox. Is that really what you wanna do? Again, I know your advisors, your CPA, your money managers, they all tell you this is the way everybody else does it, this is the way you save taxes, so why not just stack it up? I've had so many people in Freedom Founders, our members, who are young, who are younger than 59 and a half, sometimes in their early 40s, or maybe late 40s, where they've got 10, 15, 20 years to go before that lockbox money ever becomes fruitful and useful to them. Yes, they can learn to self-direct it, which is what we do in Freedom Founders, so you can get it into better investments, in my opinion, than the stock market volatility. That's a positive, but the fact is many of these young docs could be essentially, quote, what I call free for life, having the option to work or not work if they had access to that money. Not to, not to deplete the money, not to take the principal down, but to actually take that nest egg, whatever amount it is, and actually have it working for them, but taking distributions out as they need to. It's locked up, they can't get to it. Now they've pushed off, potentially, their quote, retirement date until at least 59 and a half when they could have done it probably in their 40s, at least by early 50s. That's a big problem I see. Secondly, by advocating your future finances to a money manager or 401k administrator, you've essentially taken your eye off the ball. You think you need to go there to put your money there because that's what everybody else does. That's what everybody else says to do. It's the default mechanism. But what have you learned about orchestrating your own financial future by doing that? The answer is nothing, absolutely nothing, zero. You put it there, you forget about it, or you get the monthly reports and see, see what kind of volatility is in it. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's way down and you fret over it, but you have no control. You never learned anything about managing your money by just putting it on a Wall Street tax deferred vehicle. Third point, do you realize that you convert long-term capital gains and potential depreciation offsets that can come in the form of investing in alternatives, you convert all of that to ordinary income. It's what I call a, 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 a converter from tax benefits to creating more taxation. Not, not only the fact that your taxes will be higher later when you take the money out, but you've lost the benefits of long-term capital gains, which are taxed at least half of as much as your ordinary income tax rate will be in the future, at least half. You've destroyed that. The next step, you lose the stepped up basis. So if you're thinking about generational wealth transfer, you want, to, you want your kids to be able to benefit to some extent on what you created and you want to turn it over to them, in a, in a traditional retirement plan of any, any sort, you lose that opportunity. Your kids, your heirs, your beneficiaries will pay tax on that money after you pass away when they acquire your accounts, 
they'll pay tax on that money at their ordinary income tax rates. Is that what you had in mind? Probably not. By keeping money, what I call unfettered, keep it out of the government plans, the ones that try to incite you and attract you into these plans with these great benefits, but you don't know the downside. Why don't you keep the money, what I call unfettered? Unfettered means no rules, nothing there at all. I can get at least the majority of the same tax benefits of a retirement plan if I invest in alternatives, like real businesses or real estate. My favorite is real estate, as you probably know. I can get the same tax deferral without being in the rules. I get a stepped up basis when it goes to my heirs. I don't lose that like you do in a retirement plan. I don't lose the capital gains basis. I don't lose the depreciation cost segregation as aspects. It's, it's just a lot better <clears throat> to learn how to orchestrate your money in your own plan going forward. Next, next item in my article, the Roth conversion. Now, this is a benefit, whether you're, you have a traditional plan uh, or, or you're self-directing your money, but you can convert a traditional IRA into a Roth. And that's one thing I would tell people to do, to consider doing, if you have money already there. You need to talk to your advisor, your CPA, understand the tax consequences, but I believe you, it's better to pay tax on the acorn, the smaller amount of money now, as opposed to paying tax on the oak tree when it grows up and you take those distributions out at your ordinary income tax rates. Remember, a Roth IRA is, at least today, is tax-free on the distributions. So you can convert any amount of a traditional IRA to a Roth, pay the tax today, but don't pay tax going forward. That could be a big proponent in one way you can mitigate some of the negatives of your current traditional tax deferred retirement plan. The J curve strategy. This one's very nuanced and I'm just gonna give it to you overall. You're probably not gonna get this and understand how to do it. You have to be involved with the ability to invest your tax retirement accounts in alternative investments like real estate or business. It does not work on the stock market, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, annuities, any of that stuff, it doesn't work there. So again, that's another reason why you need or should be thinking about how to be a, an advocate for your own financial future by investing in alternatives. So I've got a retirement account, traditional, and I can invest in any asset if it's self-directed. So I can invest in certain types of real estate, for example, or it could be a business. And the J-Curve strategy is, is one that says that you invest in a certain basis point in that investment with your dollars. And then for reasons I can't go into here, but they're very valid reasons, that asset actually temporarily goes down in value for a, for a period of time. Could be 12 months, 18 months. But we know that that's going to happen for, again, reasons I can't go into here. And then the upside is that asset, that same asset that went down in value is going to go back up again significantly. The point here is you invest your traditional IRA at a basis point here, and then within the next several months, an appraiser will appraise that asset at a lower value, up to 50% less than your basis when you put it in. That means when you could do a Roth conversion at the low point in the J curve, J curve down, then back up again, you do it at the low point, you've saved potentially 50% on the taxes on that conversion. And then on the upside, the, the J back up again, that it's now in a Roth IRA, so you, you mitigate the taxes going forward. Big, big strategy, but again, your financial advisor, CPA is not gonna have a clue, never even heard of it, I promise you. Ask them, try them. Finally, I'd say that little hinges swing big doors. Making what seem to be small, nuanced changes in the way you manage your own money, instead of advocating it to a, a money manager, financial advisor, will give you huge benefits on the backside. Of course, the sooner you do this in life, the bigger the compounding value is. But even if you're in your 50s and have monies in traditional IRAs or you're trying to trying to get out of the volatility stock market, changing that plan now can set you up for the rest of your life so you're not worried and playing that scarcity game. We are taught well in school how to make money. It's it's the way the world works. Get a get a get an education, get degrees, become a professional, climb as high as you can the academic ladder, and then you'll have you know a Great job for life. Is that what you really want? No, I want freedom. So learning how to make your money that you work really hard for work as hard for you as, it, as you did for it, that's the key. And nobody teaches that in our education system. You've got to learn that by self-education and alongside that, you've got to surround yourself, put yourself in arenas, in places, in tribes and communities where others are doing that. It's not going to be in your local investment clubs that invest in stocks and bonds. It's, I'm sorry, it's just not going to be there. It's not going to be with your best CPA wealth advisor because, because 
Well, if they were that good, why are they still working trading time for dollars? I always say, be careful from whom you take advice. Has that person who, who with whom you may be taking advice, have they actually created in their life what you're seeking? If they haven't, maybe you need to step back a little bit and be careful not to take all of their well-intentioned advice and maybe learn to do it on your own. That's what we do in Freedom Founders. I found the best way is to surround yourself with people that are on the same path, who actually their social proof of the concepts and the frameworks and the philosophy of life that they're, they're li li living and leading and not falling for the mainstream Wall Street marketing media that's out there and seems to have overtaken most of the messaging in this world today. It's always up to you to, to stay focused on your freedom. I'll see you next time.